the good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is being offered for the intentions of Barbara Peach, and also for the birthday of Lydia Ann Hillary. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your right hand, O oh Lord, we pray. Encompass your family with perpetual help so that, defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to Iconium cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. Jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Laconian, The gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates 
for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should not turn from those idols to the living God who made, the, who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet, in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness. For he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world. Jesus answered and said to him, 
whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, Pope Francis canonized Charles de, how do you spell his last name? (laughs) Foucault. So we have a new saint, Saint Charles de Foucault. And that is so amazing. What an impact. We need to read more about his life. Everybody, it's a requirement. You must do it. And if you can't find anything about this new saint, if you are unable to find even a short biography about him, ask a friend and they will help you. And to be honest with you, I cannot believe that the church did canonize this man, that they made him a saint. He is now officially a saint. And I would imagine the church avoiding that because he was a bit of a madman. I could see the church saying that they didn't want children to learn about his life because he's a dangerous man. It would be easier to believe that. But at the same time, a lot of people who are liberals love him. He's a very popular person with people who consider themselves liberal because it's easy for them uh, to appreciate his life. If you look at his background, He had a lot of liberal ideas. He was um, a man from wealthy means. He was from France, and he benefited from the place in his life where he was born and raised in the Western world. He was an intelligent man. He had good health. He had everything at his disposal. And I think a lot of us feel guilty when we think about the privilege that we have and all of the benefits that we have from our own lives, and maybe we can feel like, you know, we have protection and we feel safe and we feel guilty about it because other people don't have those things. We know there's a lot of people in the world who do struggle, even those who are close by, who are among us and who are low income and live in low income housing or who have are immigrants to this country and who live with many challenges and pressures and stress in their life. So we may think, okay, well, it's, you know, not exactly fair that, you know, we feel bad for these people, but we just ignore them (laughs) nonetheless. But St. Charles de Foucault He decided to fully change his life 
even though he had all of those benefits growing up. He traveled to visit the poor, he lived with the poor, and he died with the poor. And he is a saint of our time and our situation. This is not a saint who lived 500 years ago. This is a saint of our modern times. You know, and maybe we could just idolize him and say, oh, he's so cool, isn't it great? He did that, that's awesome. But really, if we even could, we could not even imitate a tiny fraction of his life. You know, <laughs> we're the kind of people who say, uh, how much can I eat on Good Friday and still follow the church's teaching? You know, <laughs> how much food do I really have to miss? What can I skimp out on? Or how, how can I give to the poor a little bit to help them, but, you know, not in a way that's going to really affect my life or cause me to have any sacrifice or detriment because of it? So we're used to that kind of way of life. But St. Charles de Foucault was not like that at all. He was a madman. We heard in the first reading today, Jesus' apostles, Paul and Barnabas. And really, if you read the stories about them, they're madmen too. The crowd in the story today, first of all, wanted to stone them, and then later the crowd wanted to worship them. The crowds are very confused. Clearly, they don't know what to make of Paul or Barnabas. Do we kill them or do we worship them? And Paul and Barnabas are trying to say, no, <laughs> don't worship us. But they did have a crazy life following Jesus. And they were at risk for people killing them every day when they traveled and preached. Every morning when they would wake up and go out to a town and visit the place and preach the good news, they didn't know what would happen. They didn't know if people were going to stone them or persecute them or kill them. And really, if we truly understood who Paul and Barnabas were, we would dismiss them as being lunatics. We would think they're just crazy. And it's the same way with Jesus. If we really think about it and we really know who Jesus is. And it's the same way with Mary, too. If we think about Mary, you know, sometimes we have to th we think of her as a, oh, sweet lady, and, you know, oh, well, but then she had this crazy image of an angel appearing to her and giving her these words, and, oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> God picked you to give birth to God. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay, Mary. And it's the same way with Joseph, too. We can look at what happened to him and what he experienced. And Joseph said, oh, yep, I got a message from an angel in a dream. And we'd be like, okay, <laughs> nice to know you, Jesus. And nice to know you, Joseph. Yeah, he's a little crazy, too. <laughs> St. Charles de Foucault is that same way. He is now officially a saint, and he is a model for all of us. We should try to be like him, and the church has told us that in no uncertain terms. And it is just the way that Jesus was. It was the way of the Christ, and it is the way of him. We can learn from studying sacred scripture 
about the life of Jesus, the life of his followers, and the life of the saints. We must learn again and again and again this message. If we really follow Jesus, we need to become madmen too, because they all were. And to follow Jesus is not boring. Let us pray. That all leaders and members of the church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. That God's Holy Spirit may strengthen elected officials in their work to protect the most vulnerable, especially the unborn, let us pray to the Lord. that those who have turned from God may receive from him the grace of conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. That Christ may give each of us the grace to love him and keep his word. Let us pray to the Lord. that the Father may grant eternal rest and peace to all who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. This morning, let us remember the intentions of Barbara Peach and Lydia Ann Hillary, who's celebrating her birthday today. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, we pray to you with confidence as we acknowledge our weakness and unite our prayers to the intercessions of St. Jude, St. Joseph, St. Charles de Foucault, and especially with the perfect prayer of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the ablation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, 
grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>